So the JN.1 variant of COVID is one of the most recent evolutions of the virus. It seems at first that it was evolving according to transmissibility. The more transmissible the virus, the better it did. More recently, it's been under immunological pressure because people have built up immunity from infection and from vaccination. So this new variety seems to have jumped out of the cluster that was, you know, being quite successful in terms of spread and just appeared in the summer. It looks like it's about 7% of the positive tests that were last reported by the UK Health Security Agency, but it does appear to be increasing as it is in many parts of the world. It seems to be that people are reporting rather more sort of things like headache, or less loss of sense of smell, which is interesting. That seems to have almost disappeared as a symptom. There are reports of increases in anxiety. I'm not quite sure what to make of that, whether that's the people who are reporting are generally still quite anxious people. But otherwise, it's the usual symptoms of COVID in terms of upper you know, nasal symptoms and maybe cough and, and lethargy and fatigue. We know that with time, your immune resistance to SARS-CoV-2 and its variants declines. So that is regardless of whether you've become immune through infection or through vaccination or a combination of the two. And the vaccination rates have actually been quite low, even amongst those who've been offered vaccines. I think the main thing that people should be doing to avoid infection is to reduce your contact with other people's exhaled air. So wearing a mask, I think, you know, it's prudent and sensible to be washing your hands after you've been on public transport, for example. But I think the most important route of transmission is certainly airborne transmission. And we should be doing whatever we can to, you know, improve ventilation in spaces where we're with other people. And, and we should be wearing masks if we want to reduce our transmission rates. It's very likely that JN.1 is going to lead to further evolutionary variants no, it already, I think, is a bit of a concern because it contains so many new mutations compared to the, the, the previous versions, the previous variants that were circulating. But I think it's inevitable that there will be further evolution of the virus. But I think the big uncertainty at the moment about JN.1 is how much long COVID it will, will result in. Because so many people are becoming infected, there are projections that the already extremely high rates of long COVID that we're seeing in the UK and elsewhere may be higher still and may really debilitate a significant proportion of the working population. The recommendation that I would make is that if you're in any way eligible for a booster, you should have the booster jab. Quite a lot of people who are eligible and not having the booster at the moment I would absolutely recommend that you have a booster. I've been boosted myself and we know that it not only reduces the frequency of currently circulating variant infections, but also does almost certainly reduce the likelihood that you will develop long COVID if you do get infected.